uh, our web conference lineup, and that is Rachel Pooley, um, who's giving our first talk. Rachel has been teaching English to young learners in Southeast Asia, Asia for over 15 years. She has a CELT-YL, a Delta with a YL specialism, and is currently undertaking an MA in Professional Development for Language Education. We're delighted to have you, Rachel. Over to you. Thank you very much, Amanda. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, great. Okay, um, good evening. I'm in Bangkok in Thailand. It's uh, 10.40 in the evening, so good evening and um, good afternoon. Good morning to everyone around the world. Um, hello. Thank you so much for attending um, this talk. I'm delighted to share it with you. There were some questions um, came up just after Chris's session about um, apps and phones and online stuff for teenagers. So I hope this um, might be of some use. Um, and I'm just waiting for my slides to come up. Hello, Alexi. In, uh, Samut Prakan, hear me. Um, so I'm just waiting for the slides and I'll get started. So it's uh, 5.41 in Tunisia. Hello, Farida. Good evening. Hi, Sinem. Are you there? Sinem, um, quick tech issue. Where are the slides? Uh, I think that should be it. Anyway, hello from Argentina. Wow, the other side of the world. How fabulous. Poland, Cairo, Egypt, Saudi, Tunisia, Lighty. <laughs> hello, the UK as well. Romania. Wow, what a fantastic, fantastic turnout from across the globe. That's excellent. Romania, Moscow, Lima in Peru. Ah, okay. Great. Um, so the slides are there now. Thanks to them. Um, so the title of my talk is Songs for Social Change and the Flipped Classroom. Um, okay, um, so I'll talk, give you a bit of background um, about protest music and the Sustainable Development Goals from the UN. Then I'll look at some technology and upper secondary learners. We'll look at a bit of theory about the flipped classroom and Bloom's taxonomy. I'll give you a practical example using Beyonce's If I Was a Boy, um, and I have some more ideas for the classroom as well. Um, so if you have any questions, do put them in the chat box. I will answer most questions at the end. <coughs> um, so I'll keep an eye on that, though. Um, all right, so um, I'll start with a bit of background about the idea that I got for where I got um, songs for social change from. So I lived in Myanmar from 2011 to 2014, and I went back in 2017 to deliver a workshop at the LTEX conference. Um, May May Wynn, you can see it in the picture, one of my favorite ladies in the whole world, Dr. May May Wynn, um, was doing a workshop on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, now, I'm sure that you might be aware a couple of years ago, uh, well, ongoing in the media about um, the genocide that took place towards the Rohingya ethnic group um, in the north of Myanmar. These people were persecuted, so they had to leave them in Bangladesh now in, um, constant, in, in camps, trying to go back to their villages. Um, and Mimi was doing a session with a, a, a group of teachers from all over the country, from different ethnic groups, different religions. And while this was going on, I was wondering how she going to deliver a session on peace and tolerance um, and caring for your neighbor without um, upsetting the elephant in the room and without and avoiding conflict where possible. Now, Mimi used a song, which I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with, which talks about peace and raises awareness of how war and poverty need a dialogue, but in a non-threatening way. I was really, really impressed by how she managed to open a dialogue within that training room with so many different... Uh, religions, ethnic groups present, at, at the same time avoiding conflict. 
Um, so I was, I'm going to give you one minute. Um, can you guess the song? It's quite an old song. It's by um, the singer from the, a very famous British band. Um, so if, I wonder if you can guess the, guess the song. I'll give you one minute to type some ideas into the chat box. A song about war, um, peace, poverty, raising awareness of peace. So I'll give you a few minutes. It's very famous. <laughs> we have John Lennon, Tracy Chapman, good idea. Any more ideas? Now, oh, good. Oh, yes, didn't think of that one. Any more ideas? Multiple attendees are typing. I'll give you uh, 30 seconds. The Beatles, Michael Jackson. Perhaps, perhaps. All right. Um, keep putting your ideas in there. I'm going to tell you about the song, your answers in a second. But while I was there, I also found this book. You can see the book on the um, the PowerPoint, Songs for Social Change. I actually have it here. Um, now I bought this book at the conference. Um, it was developed by an NGO who um, who is Myanmar NGO. And I got back home and I started flipping through it and thinking about May May's session and how songs for protest, opening dialogues about poverty, religion, war, social issues, was a fantastic way of engaging students. Some great ideas there, John, uh, Elton John, Tracy Chapman. Ooh, very good. Um, OK, the song was, I will let you know, some of you were absolutely correct, John Lennon, imagine. Um, oh. The, actually, the date is missing there. Now, this was written in 1971, not 191. 1971. No, sorry. Yes, 1971. That was almost 50 years ago. Um, and it's great that this song is still being used in, in training rooms and classrooms to, to raise awareness of, of issues that haven't really gone away or might even be worse, um, in fact. And um, so thinking about this when I got back home, um, I found an article in the New York Times about protest music. Um, the link, I'll give you the link at the end, absolutely. Um, I will give you all the information at the end for uh, all the materials I use here. Um, I found a, an article about protest music in the New York Times, which I thought was really, really, really timely, even now. Um, this was 2016, still now 2019. Studying protest music of the past or the present can be a powerful and engaging teaching tool for students. Whether the goal is to better understand a historical time period, analyze the power of lyrics and poetry, Understand understand forces of social change or respond to current issues. And um, as I say, I will give you the link to the book at the end, and I'll show some more songs that I've used um, at the end, which promote these ideas of change as well. So that was a bit of background. I'm going to move on to um, the section about actual secondary students and technology. And um, so I have another two questions for you, because you're so active. It's great. Um, I live in Thailand, and I would like to know two answers. Number one, what is the population of Thailand? Just roughly. And number two, how many mobile phones are there in Thailand? So I'll give you another few minutes. Take a wild guess, the population of Thailand, and how many mobile phones there are in Thailand. A lot, yes, there's a lot. Some of you might be Googling now. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot. Yeah, I Google, all right, Google is great. Yeah, I Googled it um, just out of interest because my Thai teenagers are consistently consistently glued to their phones. You see them on the public transport, in the street, bumping into each other because they're all, all on their phones. Um, in class, they're always trying to use their phones. So rather than um, tell them to stop using their phones, I wanted to try and get them to use their phones to learn English. Um, so the numbers, the population of Thailand is 67 million. And the number of mobile phones is 69 million. So there are actually there are actually more phones than people in Thailand. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the teenagers here are absolutely crazy for their phones. They they sit in restaurants and they text each other across the table. They hardly ever speak to each other. I'm, I've seen that in Europe as well. I'm not sure about other countries. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Thanks, Evelyn. Um, so, as I said, I'm always looking for ways to engage learners. And I think using their mobile phones, using apps and things like that, um, is a fantastic way of getting them to learn English because there's so many apps in English. Um, in addition, I'm also a massive, massive music fan, and I'm always trying to find ways to get music into the classroom because music is, again, another fantastic way of engaging learners. They all listen to music. They all listen to a lot of music in the English language. So trying to get them to use this in the classroom to learn English has been a bit of an aim of mine for quite a while. Um, okay, every year, uh, quite a lot of times do the year, there's lots of... Um, days that come up, sort of um, uh, International Women's Day, International Day of the Girl, and things like that. So I always try and use these days as a springboard for discussion, especially in upper secondary learners, because they're well aware of a lot of the issues that go on around the world. Um, and an example um, I want to give you um, was uh, International Day of the Girl. This happens every year. And there is a fantastic site on YouTube. Again, I'll give you the link at the end so you can watch the video and see what you think. And there's a fantastic um, site on YouTube called Global Goals, the Day of the Girl. And there's a video um, that I watched, and it's just so powerful. I really wanted to use this in the secondary classroom um, to talk about gender equality, women's rights, uh, and, and all sorts of things like that. So um, as I said, I'll let you watch the video at the end. But you can see there was a hashtag um, hashtag freedom for girls. So I want I let the students watch this video. I'll just show you some slides from it. You can watch the video at the end. Um, some some of the slides are very very powerful. It's got a really really powerful song behind it as well. So the students went away, watched this on YouTube, um, and you can see some of the um, images are very very powerful. It's a very very positive message by the end of the the video, which I'll let you watch at the end. Um, and then they have all these girls from all over the world um, dancing, talking about we are small, um, we are angry, but we want we, you, we want to listen. We want you to listen to us. Um, so the learners loved it anyway, uh, and they asked if they could go on Twitter and with the hashtag Freedom for Girls and add something. Um, so a few days later, a lot of them came back. Um, this is including the boys as well, and taught, and shared what they'd learned on Twitter in English. Um, about this Twitter hashtag and what they'd learned about girls around the world and what rights some, some girls have and what rights don't have. Um, so this was getting them engaged in reading in English and texting in English on Twitter using their phones. Um, so I began look, looking for more ways to use phones um, uh, and had been aware of the term the flipped classroom for a while. And this is how it works. So a bit of theory for you. So the flipped classroom. As you can see from the image, the traditional classroom has very much is very much teacher led. So the teachers at the front, the learners are in a line looking at the teacher or looking at the board, um, and they often are set homework and um, for consolidation at the end of the lesson or at the end of the week. A flipped classroom is where the learners do the groundwork at home. So they use their phones to go to YouTube to to watch a video, to watch a song, a TED talk that the teachers set them, and then come back into class to work together on projects and group work, which leads to a much more student-centered classroom, deeper understanding and active engagement of the topic or the song or the theme um, that we're focusing on. The work at home, as I said, can be in the form of watching a video, a lecture. I'm a massive fan of TED Talks that the teacher set, um, and the teacher can pull out appropriate elements of the flipped classroom depending on the educational co context. And um, so, as the quote says, the main goal of flipping a classroom is to cultivate deeper, richer learning experiences um, for students when the instructor is present to coach and guide them. Emphasis is on higher order thinking skills and application to complex problems. Uh, Farida, that's a great question about lower order thinking skills. That links onto my next slide, which is Bloom's taxonomy. So, um, the Bloom's order of thinking skills, the lower groups, which is remembering, understanding, applying, are the lower order thinking skills. And um, the higher order thinking skills 
or the hearts relate to how the learners can then use that information to create something new, to evaluate something, or to critically examine it and analyze or explore it. The taxonomy relates to the flipped classroom in that the lots, the lower order thinking skills are done at home, and so more time in the classroom can be devoted to the hot. So there's a deeper understanding in the classroom. Let me give you an example. <coughs> uh, okay, my upper secondary Thai learners uh, have been studying the third conditional in class. I set them a task to do at home where they watch a video on YouTube um, on their phones and complete the questions. So it was uh, Beyonce, if I was a boy, uh, focusing on gender equality. Um, and you can see the exercises that they did at home. So they did listening for gist, listening for detail, and then they made notes about some discussion questions to bring back into in the class. Now they can watch this video as many times as they like until they completely under, until they've, they've had enough time to listen to it, maybe slow it down, um, and so they can own their own learning of, of the song. Um, so as well as being third conditional revision, this song also focuses on gender equality. Um, and the task set asks the learners to use their lower order thinking skills of remembering, understanding, and applying at home, and then come to class the next day prepared using the notes that they've made at home. Um, in the class, next slide. In the class, I was there to guide them as they took part in discussions on their notes, what they thought of the song. They worked together using the higher order thinking skills to evaluate and analyze the song the themes, the, um, the roles of gender equality. Then they wrote their own verse about the song, um, some of which, using the third conditional, which was the, the language point, some of which showed very personal responses about bullying, shyness, and how they feel about interacting um, with the opposite sex. So some of the examples were, this is from Boys and Girls. If I was a girl, I wouldn't laugh at boys for not being on the football team. So a boy wrote this. Um, and if I was a boy, I wouldn't bully girls who wear glasses. Um, so we used this song then as a springboard um, for a debate about gender equality. Um, in Thailand, Bangkok society is pretty, is pretty equal, to be fair. But in the wider areas of Thailand and rural areas, there's a lot of, um, a lot of inequality, I think. So they, they actually had a great discussion about this. And um, So to summarize... The lots were done at home, um, and the class time was spent on further encouraging the hots, the higher order thinking skills. So we know we're not we're busy teachers. We have lots to get through every term. We very rarely, yes, yeah, teaching grammar not only the gender. So there's a language point, and there's also um, a, a, an EDI theme as well, raising awareness of the EDI theme. And um, in busy terms, we've lots to cover on the syllabus. They often have tests at the end of terms. So this is. Um, we don't always have time to go this in-depth with songs, this in-depth with listening, or, or, or themes that are really, really crucial to, to upper and um, secondary learners. So um, they give learners the ownership of their own learning at home, and then they come in and have a debate and use a springboard to talk more about this. Um, so this is just one example of using songs for social change and the flipped classroom. But some further ideas, some practical ideas for you to take away. Um, is our secondary music club. Now, the learners in, in our school, they have their regular classes, and then a lot of them come to a music club after for an hour after the class, um, which I wrote the materials for. It links to the language point that they've been learning or the, 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 um, the syllabus that they've been learning that, that week. Um, and from this music, from this club, every lesson we did a different song, which all had a social awareness aspect to the song, um, so we've got to use these songs a lot more to further engage the teens. So again, using a flipped classroom approach, they would watch the song at home. Um, linking to the language, as I said, linking to the language they've been focusing on in class. Um, we used a song to investigate themes like gender equality, peace, freedom, and so on. You can see from the poster, the wall, amazing wall display that they made. Wall displays are not just for primaries, I don't think. Um, they made this fantastic wall display. They made a peace tree. Um, where they, they completed the sentence, peace is, and this was put up, and students who didn't come to the music club then also wrote their own peace message and stuck it on the tree. So by the end of term, we had all these fantastic messages of peace <coughs> as well. Um, and this also got other learners interested. 
Um, a particular favourite of mine in the club was Lady Gaga, who actually runs um, a Facebook and Twitter account, and she has a big programme called Born This Way Foundation, and it's, it's sort of um, preventing suicide and also encouraging children, um, secondary learners, to be, to be happy with who they are and to be proud of who they are. Um, so on Facebook and Twitter, Lady Gaga promotes this 21 Days of Kindness idea. I'm sure it's still there. So the hashtag BeKind21. So again, getting the learners to use their mobile phones, go on Twitter, find this hashtag, um, read through the posts on social media. So again, engaging the learners using their own phones. Um, and then in the class, they planned their 21 days together. So they planned 21 days of kindness where they had to do a kind act to people around them once a day. Um, and then every week they came back to the club and they discussed what they'd done, who they'd been kind to, how many how many smiles they got for the day. And it actually got quite competitive to see how kind people could be. So it was really, really a, a massive sense of achievement at the end of the 21 days for the learners. And also really, really promoted um, this sort, sort of sense of be kind to anyone, to everyone. And they were always chatting about um, how, how they'd been kind to people with their classmates. Um, so that's another example of using apps classroom and songs for social change um, ah, okay here are some more ideas for songs now these are my type of songs my favorite songs a lot of you had some of these ideas when I asked the question earlier and um, so we've got Chase, Tracy Chapman talking about a revolution and um, the specials Nelson Mandela so a lot of it like it's um, uh, racial equality public enemy fight the power Lady Gaga, Born This Way, um, a bit of Queen, you can't bit a bit of Queen as, as far as I'm concerned, um, and also Bob Marley, Get Up, Stand Up, Stand Up for Your Rights. So, oh, yes, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> so, as I say, these are my songs that I always try and shoehorn into the classrooms, but I do realise that I'm older than the kids, I'm not down with the kids. They know much more songs that they're listen, listening to than I am. So, I would highly recommend that you ask the children, ask the students what they're listening to what their favourite bands are, and then have a listen yourself and find out if there's actually a message within that song, because a lot of them actually do have messages. So again, getting more engagement, asking the students, personalising it for them, um, and raising awareness, as I say, of social, social, um, uh, of social rights um, around using music. Um, all right, we've got a few more minutes left. I did say that um, I will give you some links. Um, further ideas for flipped classrooms. Um, Edmodo has some amazing ideas um, on how to flip your classroom. The book, this book um, from me and more, you can buy it uh, online. That's the link there. Um, I would highly recommend this book. It's got um, Tracy Chapman in it, John Lennon, um, Bob Marley, um, Megan Trainer, who else? Michael Jackson. So obviously a, a massive resource here, and it's got so many different um, activities that you can do as a flip classroom. So they do them at home, and then they come back and they discuss the song. Um, and um, last one. Okay, just before I finish, I did promise you the song. So I'm going to put the song link in um, in the chat box for you. Um, and if you've got time, if there's a break between now and the next um, session, you can have a look at it. Um, I promise you will absolutely love it. Um, and please do put some comments in the chat box if you do watch it. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you very much. And um, if you need any, any more information, this is my email address. Um, and have you got any questions? <clears throat> You're welcome, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, any questions that I can help with? Just lots of thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Of course, that can be. Um, that's a nice question from um, Jovina. Sorry, I hope your um, I hope your I pronounced your name right. They can absolutely be slang. It's natural English, and the music and real natural English that students work here on the TV, in music, on the radio 
will be natural English. There will be there will be a lot of slang, and um, so I think that's absolutely fine um, to use it because it's natural. Gordana is watching the video. Fabulous. Um, Evelyn, what would be the stages to teach a song? To teach the song or to use it for listening skills? Um, listening skills would probably um, do, uh, you predict something first, then you would do some gist listening, then some detailed listening, noticing language perhaps, then follow up questions. I'm great, I'm really pleased people are watching the video, that's great. Teaching English through songs is, um, again, another, a completely different talk, a whole other talk. We could be here for hours um, using this. So this is sort of using technology to engage, to engage learners. Good. Yeah, thanks, Inga. Okay, Amanda, thanks very much. Everyone, I'll pass you back over to Amanda. Um, thanks for the great the great messages about watching the song as well. Thank you, Rachel. That was such a lovely talk and such important topics and issues to bring up in the classroom and such a great way to do it through using those songs and great resources for us all to try as well. So thank you so much for that. It was really lovely uh, to hear all your ideas and expertise. Um, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, okay, 